Now that we've learned how to protect the VMs, let's see the option that uh, we can do initiating a failover action. So this is the task where we can actually do it from either the protected side or from the recovery side. Logic says that we want to do it from the DR side because we are assuming that the production side is down. So let's do that. Let's log into the DR side. And this is what we see here. And we can really perform these activities from two places, from either the consistency group screen itself or from the VMs themselves. So remember, I created two consistency groups. The first one protected two VMs with a 25 minutes RPO, and the second one contained a single VM with a sync-based replication RPO, and they're both residing on the same data store. However, because we are doing the splitting-based um, I.O., we're basically replicating VM at the VM level. We can fail over at the VM level. This is really the beauty of Recover Point. So let's see what are the options. First of all, let's open the CG001, and we can see which VM is protected under uh, CG001. Secondly, let's see the actual uh, options that are there. The first option is to unprotect the VM. This will just stop the replication and unprotect the VMs, but will still leave the replica VMs data at the disaster site. We don't want to delete it because we assume that you may still want to bring them up, but it will stop protection from going any forward. The second option is to disable the group. This is just disabling replication, but not unprotecting. And as the name tend to suggest, if it's disabled, we can then later on enable it. Maybe we want to do it because we want to troubleshoot something, or we have a, some sort of a WAN issue between the sides, so we just want to disable replication. The third option is pause transfer. And again, we can pause and then enable it again. The fourth option is to add a copy, a new copy, and some more settings that are related to the screen here. The fifth option is an interesting one. That's a test copy. That means that instead of just running a failover, very similar to VM or Site Recovery Manager, what we can do is actually bring the VMs at the recovery site in a bubble network. And by doing so, we can check that the VMs are actually booting up, talking to each other without actually stopping the replication, without powering off the VMs at the production site. The next option is recover production. This is different than failover. So first, let's see what failover is. Failover basically means that I'm going to fail over the VMs to the remote side. So from the production vCenter to the recovery vCenter in, in my case. That's pretty much the straightforward use case, and I would argue the more common use case. So what is test? So what is uh, re recover production? Recover production basically means that I'm going to take the data from the recovery site, a specific point in time probably, and I'm going to use it and then copy it back to the production site and then use that point in time at the production site and bring the VMs from it. This is very useful because many customers do not want to replicate the VM locally and remotely. They only replicate it remotely and by doing so they can kill two birds at the same stone. They can run a failover but also fail over at the production site which is what this use case is recover production. It will still recover the VM at the production site, at the protected site, but using a point in time from the recovery site. The other options are apply bookmark. So instead of just a snapshot that are designated per my RPO, I can set a specific one. Uh, very, very common for customers and use cases, for example, where I'm running a hotfix by Microsoft. And instead of just naming it with a vague name, I can call the bookmark before MS hotfixes. So if something goes wrong, I can actually know because of the manual name that I gave it that this is the bookmark that I want to recover from. So this is this option. And what's interesting about it is that by default it will use crash consistent. However, I can also run it as an application consistent by running the KVS utils, which are executables that you run inside the VMs that allow you to run the VSS provider within Windows and by doing so running more application consistent type of uh, backup. So that's where Apply Bookmark is uh, running outside of the traditional RPO that is based upon what I set it to. And the last setting is really just edit startup sequence. This is again very interesting. Uh, very similar to v VMO Site Recovery Manager, I can set from here what are the VMs that will boot up prior to the other VMs. So first of all, if you, if you remember, I already had the startup sequence at the CG level. So the CG itself can be any number from one to five, but then even within the CG, 
I can set up which VM will boot up prior to the other VM. So for example, let's assume this consistency group was based on my infrastructure VM, the domain controller, and so on and so forth. It's very likely that I would like to boot up the domain controller. Let's assume this is the first domain controller, this is the second one. I would like to boot up the first one and then the second one, even within the CG, which is exactly what this screen is. And moreover, it allows me to set up some timeouts. So for example, if I know that it takes a while for an application to boot up, and not just Windows or Linux to boot up, but actually the services inside of it, this is the place that I would like to play with the timeout settings. So these are all the settings, and let's uh, actually declare a failover. Okay, so let's perform the failover activity. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the VMs at the source site powered on, and let's see what will happen with Recover Point for Virtual Machine while I'm actually declaring a failover. So this is the consistency group I'm actually going to run a failover. And this is the copy that I'm going to choose to fail over to and from. Let's see what image I want to specify. So basically every RPO that will be there as part of what it already replicated using the snapshots is choosable. So I can choose which point in time I want to recover from. As you can see, there are plenty of them which is, that's one of the unique points of recover point for virtual machine. Pretty much every point in time can be recovered from and to. So let's just select a random one. Here, by the way, if I created a bookmark, I will see it here. So bookmark will have a meaningful name, as you can see here, but because I didn't, and I just let uh, recover point to do the re uh, replication for me, there is no specific bookmark. So let's select this one. Let's assume this is a meaningful a point in time that I want to fail over to. Press the next button. This is an interesting uh, point. Here, I can basically choose different networks for the failover network. Unlike VM or SRM, when you can choose the bubble network as part of the testing uh, scenario, here you can also choose it for failover. Why? Because you may want to run a real failover activity without actually hurting the VMs at the production site. However, in my case, I'm fine, so I'm just going to use a dedicated network, which was the network that this VM was designed on before, which is this one, and press the next button. And ask me, are you sure that that's the one that you want to access? I'm telling it yes. And here we can see what's currently taking place in terms of the activity itself. We can see image access is being done. And this is the DR site. Soon we'll see this shadow VM, which are just uh, the file that's representing the VMs before the failover activity, actually becoming the, the real VMs at the remote site. So let's press the failover button. Yep, I'm confirming that that's the image that I want to choose for the failover itself. And that's it. Now let's wait a couple of seconds or minutes, depends on the failover activity, and see what's happening at the DR site. Okay, so we can see the three VMs that have been powered up at the recovery site. As you can see, these two have just have a suffix with dot copy. And the third one is the dot shadow. The third one is actually the one that I didn't fail over, even though I declare a failover only on the first CG. So this VM wasn't part of the first CG. That's why we see the shadow suffix, which means it hasn't actually been failed over. However, these two are. And if we right click them and open a console, we will actually see those VMs up and running at the recovery site. There you go. That's the VM here. And I can pretty much do the same one for the second one as well, just to see the console.